So we're sitting at Labor Day weekend at Means Lodge. Next to me is a longtime friend, Charlie Plosser. We have traveled a number of places in the world together. We've run fishing together. We've been at all kinds of things together. And now we're here Labor Day weekend in Maine. And it was a nice day to be together, I think. It was terrific, terrific day. Yeah. So two, three minutes, Charlie. We. You're asking the wrong person for two or three minutes. <laughs> That's like Kissing, when Kissinger said, it'll take me three minutes to get to the comma. <laughs> it was a good. That's all so, right. so here's a question for people who uh, might be interested. You, you were on the firing line in 2008, 2009. You were at the center of the decision making of the largest and most important central bank in the world, the Federal Reserve. Some people might disagree with that, but most people would agree <laughs> with that. Now you look around the world, it's 10 years later, and your perspective is that of the seasoned policymaker, who's now the consigliere, you're able, you, well, you're able to give some counsel to those who are following you. What would you tell them to think about in this world where we have the central banks at the center, where we have political confrontation with them in ways we never expected, where we have 15, 16 trillion of negative interest rate debt in Europe. How, how would you counsel those that are following you in this decision-making role? Oh, boy, that's a, that's a big question. But I, I think one of the things I would think about carefully is that one big message I would have, particularly for central banks, is that um, policymakers, central bankers, have come to the um, place where they think central banks are our solution to so many of our economic problems that central banks can solve those problems, and they can. So one of the things I would caution us about, and caution policymakers, is to sort of uh, learn to control expectations about what central banks can and can't do and understand that there's a limit to what central banks can do. And expecting too much from central banks or uh, expecting central banks can be a panacea for all sorts of economic problems, I believe is a dangerous place to go because it leads to, dare I say, unconventional policies stretching the, pushing the envelope, stretching the powers of a central bank. And um, when it comes to unusual circumstances, what that leads to is unconventional policies or new policies can often result in unintended consequences. And unintended consequences can be very damaging to the economy. And moreover, it can be difficult to unwind yourself from those unconventional policies. And indeed, even back in 2008 and 2009, I spoke a lot. You heard me speak a lot about some of those risks. I didn't know the answer, but I knew it would be harder to unwind ourselves from all this than, um, uh, than people were thinking about. And that sort of leads to, the, to the, another problem, which is related, which is the temptation to believe that, um, uh, think about the short term and not worry enough about the long term. I heard colleagues of mine and other central bankers saying, I don't care what the risk of this policy, I've got to survive till tomorrow. Right, right. Well, you know, the problem is, is the decisions you make today often affects your choices tomorrow and much beyond that because they shape expectations and they shape other things in ways that you actually might be making yourself worse off, even though it seems like in the short term you're doing the right thing. So, I, so the two messages I think that bear, bear um, thinking a lot about is what, what the limitations of central bank policy is in monetary policy and to try to escape from the short-term focus about what, it, what you're doing and the near-term results as opposed to the longer-term results. Those are the two messages I think that bear. It, it, it's, a, it's a great message for those who are able to hear it and see it. I'd finish with just one short question. You've watched the American system all your professional life as a dean, 
as a Federal Reserve president and you see it today. Are you an optimist or a pessimist? Well, in general, um, I'm an optimist. I think we have a remarkable system in this country. Our uh, system of government and our free market economy have proven to be remarkably resilient, even in very hard times. Uh, we need to trust that, resist that resiliency uh, and believe in it and allow it to function rather than interfering with it. Um, so generally, I'm an optimist, but you know, we have our share of challenges. And you know, whether it be you know, the economy or whether one of my important beliefs is the independence of central banks, both in the United States and around the world, that's clearly under threat uh, these days to an extent that's not entirely new, but the degree to which they're, a threat, uh, they're under, under threat um, is probably higher now than it's been in quite some time. So um, I worry about that and the threat to those institutions where particularly in the case of the Fed and central banks, people have come to expect too much from those institutions. That increases the political pressure and undermines independence. And the willingness of central banks to succumb to that pressure, accept responsibility for things that they cannot control undermines their independence. So, uh, so yes, I think there's some risks, but I remain an optimist. Charlie Flosser at Lean's Lodge on Labor Day weekend. Thank, Thank you, you. Thank Thanks, you, Charlie.